going to tell you the story of life. How from dead matter, increasingly complex life arises. So life is weird. It goes against entropy, the laws of physics. It's like a tiny capsule with unstable things in it that do work. And it started sort of randomly. Because as you might already know, anything that has even a tiny probability to happen, given an infinite amount of time, will certainly happen and an infinite amount of times. But luckily this didn't take an infinite amount of time because about 4 billion years ago, some complex chemical reactions in a sort of inhabitable Earth created some really complex molecules, RNA and ATP, ribonucleic acid and adenosine triphosphate. And basically RNA is like a primitive form of DNA. So it's a complex molecule that can do some basic work. And ATP is a molecule that's really good as, at storing energy for living things because it's really easy to break down and it's really easy to store energy in it. So these two molecules created the first organisms. RNA started to do work using ATP as energy. And it would be rather complicated to consider this a living, a living thing. Simil it would be similar to a virus. It's really simple, really. But let's continue. Because some organisms, well, apart from everything becoming mo more and more complex to do more things, organisms started to evolve. And what's a really good source of energy instead of ATP floating around? Yeah, the first element of a food chain, the sun. So some organisms started to use this energy by photosynthesis. You may, have over, you may already know this, but it's basically how, what how plants do to turn sunlight into energy. So basically those organisms took in sunlight and turned it into energy to do their work. But other organisms evolved to kill those organisms. So one did photosynthesis and the others ate them. So yeah, that was a simple food chain there. And well, everything continued evolving more and more complex until there was an organism that tried to eat another one, but for some reason it didn't kill it. So the small organism ended up like living in the big organism and this caused the small organism to focus on making energy or ATP while the big organism mm, focused on protecting its inside so that it could make more energy. And as well, glucose was starting to be used by these organisms, which can store more energy, although it's not so easy to break down. So as you may have guessed, this was the first mitochondria, also commonly called the powerhouse of the cell. And after that, lots of cells started to do this process because they, they became much more efficient at producing energy and that's what they wanted and they also started later to make like groups of cells they attach to each other and live like in communities and that created the first multicellular organisms so up to here we didn't know much because it's really it's, it's really small life and it's from really really long ago like as i said like three billion years so we don't know much about the chemical reactions that made RNA and ATP. What we know is that it happened and that those molecules evolved to do things. But yeah, that's all we know really. And well now, multicellular, as I said, multicellular life appeared, including protozoans and sponges. By the way, fun fact, sponges are the organism that lives the longest with like 15,000 years, so yeah, a long time. 
and then after a while plants and fish started evolving and yeah basically you had the marine life increasingly complex and after another long while those fish started to grow limbs or systems to walk on solid ground and basically they conquered the, that solid ground and were able to collect all those resources of course they weren't able right away to breathe there maybe they had to go to the water again but eventually they created what we know as dinosaurs so those dinosaurs as, as you know well the asteroid came and killed them but not all of them because there was one dinosaur the therapsid that was really similar to a mammal and it's actually what mammals evolved from and at first they were like tiny rats well not, not so tiny they were at the age of the dinosaurs everything was huge but basically they were like rats and some of those mammals started to grow wings and systems to fly and they created the first birds and the rest is history mammals started evolving into more complex mammals and really different from each other until what we know today. At first they evolved into simians, that evolved into the into hominids, which, are, which had a really large brain, so they could do much more work. And already life there was really, really complex. It had trillions and trillions and an unfathomable number of cells and DNA and everything. And they started to grow larger brains until the hominids came and they started inventing things, hunting other animals with tools, which was new to life, and basically they evolved into what we are right now, humans. So now I will talk about the future, but it's really pointless because it depends a lot on what we do. Like for example, if they created a, a human specifically designed to survive car crashes and it's really ugly and strange and for example humans on the moon or on Mars they are really different from each other so uh, we don't really know what they what we will evolve into in my opinion with this upcoming space age we the different humans on different planets will eventually evolve it will take a, a, a long time but they will evolve to live on those planets and also there might be more our lives might be more comfortable and we might not have to focus so much on survival and that might change things a lot so thanks for watching i, I hope you've enjoyed you might have noticed that i changed my youtube name it's because it was quite misleading because it looked like it was the science of flamethrowers and now I've called it pure science it has lots of meaning into it but I'll leave that for you to uncover